Hello there, you amazing viewers and subscribers. Welcome to a brand new video for today. Now, this isn't going to be Doctor Who related. As you can tell, I'm wearing my Starfleet uniform. As you all know, I am a big, massive fan of Doctor Who and, of course, the American sci-fi show, well, franchise, really, Star Trek. Every single one of them I absolutely love. So, in this video, I'm going to be ranking every single Star Trek series that has been out there. And in, in a later video, I'm going to be ranking all of the movies. So, as you can tell, I've put me pips i think i've actually put them in the wrong way or oh, never mind as you can tell i've actually ranked myself as captain just for the sake of it i absolutely do love star trek and i love every single version of the enterprise every single version of the movie so i've decided this channel will no longer just be about doctor who it's going to be about the star trek franchise as well so one video will be doctor who one video will be star trek well there will be two videos out today one will be about star trek and there will be one later on today where i talk about Doctor Who The Web of Fear because I've actually gone and brought The Web of Fear on DVD as well as having it on the Blu-ray Steelbox so I'm going to do a review on what I think of the new special edition of Doctor Who The Web of Fear so anyway coming out of that um, little bit of that thing so coming into Star Trek ranking the Star Trek series so, there are nine TV shows at the moment for Star Trek. So, I'm going to jump into Star Trek to my ninth least favourite Star Trek series. So, in ninth place, it is Star Trek, the original series. Yes, the one with William Shatner as Captain James T. Kirk. And it doesn't really wow me as much as the other Star Trek TV shows do. I find it so... I get that it was made in the 60s, but I really don't like William Shatner. I mean... Every day is just so terrible, isn't it? I cannot sit still in the captain's chair and talk. The only good character in it is Mr. Spot, play, played by Lennon Nimoy. And it's a great... I do like Lennon Nimoy as Mr. Spock. He's absolutely awesome. But Star Trek Digital Series is set in 2265 to 2267. Really, and then in 2267... Uh, let me try that again. Sorry, it's the original series is actually set in a point in time in Star Trek history where it's set from 2265 to 2269, but also to 20, 2270 because it does, even though it was cancelled after the third season, it was basically picked up in the in the cartoon series until we get to the motion picture set in 2271. So never mind about that though. So the original series is bred over three series. The char the char actor slash character I really don't like is James T. Kirk. Admittedly, he does get better in the films, like in the original series films. William Chatton does get a lot better. I do like Chris Pine's version of Kirk a lot more, but that will be another video topic. I do like the original series a little bit. There's got some good episodes in there, like the one with the Tribbles on K7 with the Klingon ship. I like the bit with the Klingon battle, Spock's brain, even though that is a bit of a weak episode. I think that was trying to go in a good approach. The Enterprise Innocence is another good episode, especially when you see the Romulans you making their own Klingon vessels due to a deal with the Klingons. I absolutely do like that. So coming into eighth place, it is the animated series. Yeah, this is set at the same time as the original series. So around about 20, 20, uh, 20, 22 69 to 2270 really and it's not as good as the original series again this one is higher than the original series because i do like certain stories in it i like the way they bring back um civil line jo civil eye joe jones who was the episode with the character from the tribbles i do like the klingons i like the way they're trying to get this series to go it's actually an okay series really it's a lot better than the original series for me does some have some bad episodes? Got some good episodes like all Trek shows do. So never mind about that. So jumping into my seventh in seventh place, it is Star Trek Enterprise. Yeah, the prequel set in 21, 5, 2151 to twenty one sixty one, and it's actually got some good stories in it. I mean, when you get to season three and season four, that's when it's starting to peak, and then when you get and then it gets cancelled after through season four. That's when it's starting to get good. Season 1, yeah, there's some good episodes in Season 1. There's some bad episodes in Season 1. There's some good episodes in Season 2. There's some bad episodes in Season 2. So, Enterprise, for me, is a bit of a mixed bag. I can 
watch them, but I don't enjoy certain of them. I do enjoy specifically the later seasons, like season, like season three and four. I absolutely do love them a lot more. The only thing about it I really don't like is from season four is the last episode for um these are the voyages. I like the fact they tried to get it to go into the next generation episode, the Pegasus from season seven of the next gen, with Riker being torn what to do. But there again, ew, it's such a very, very mixed bag. And I don't like the way they kill Commander Trip Tucker. Because out of all of the characters from Star Trek Enterprise, Commander Tucker is my favourite character from Star Trek Enterprise. I do like him. Commander Charles Tucker the Third. I absolutely do like him. I like the way he's there trying to get over his angle in season three as well, because the Cindy killed his sister in the attack on Earth. Yeah, I do kind of like Chip Tucker. Arch is my second favorite character, followed by um Hoshi, because I think the Linda Park who played Hoshi, she's pretty fit to be honest with you. She's absolutely fit, so I have to say that for Hoshi, she is fit. So anyway, coming out of Enterprise jumping into Lower Deck, set in 20, 2380, the year after Star Trek Nemesis. And I actually do kind of enjoy this little series. It's a lot better than the animated series because I do pretty much, in, I don't really like the animated series that much. But I do like Lower Decks a lot more. I like the little bits and pieces that they're throwing in from Star Trek history. I like the Borg, like the Borg reference. I like the references. Like in the latest episode of Star Trek um, Lower Decks, episode 3 of season 2. I like the fact they brought in Tom, um, Tom Paris. Play um, Tom Paris is the pilot from Star Trek Voyager, aka the USS Voyager. So I do kind of like that reference the way they did that. I like the reference they did to Miles O'Brien in the Starfleet Academy episode. I absolutely do like this uh, this series. I think the characters are good. I like the way that's not set on a main ship from the Federation, a bit like Deep Space Nine. Well, Deep Space Nine was kind of set on the sp the main space station or between a wormhole. Voyager wasn't a main ship, but it was made a main ship when it got stranded in the Delta Quadrant. So I kind of like how we on the Cerritos, and that is just like a secondary science vessel, and they use it to carry on like second contact and stuff. I like Boy Boiler. He's my favourite character at the moment. I like how he like their screams and stuff. I like the fact he joins the Titan with Commander Riker, and they go into the uniforms from 2370, 2373, which was from First Contact, from AK the start of the Dominion War, Season 5 of Deep Space Nine. And it's still, still actually nice in the 2380s, actually still wearing the those uniforms especially in lower decks are wearing like a kind of a new uniform that you do see in a bit of voyager's future episodes so i do kind of enjoy that as well so coming into my fifth favorite star trek tv show i'd say this is discovery i kind of like the way discovery it has headed over its three seasons coming up to four I absolutely do like the way they set it off just 10 years before Kirk. So set in 2256, 2257, and then they jump into the future in the thirty in the 31st century. I absolutely do like season one and two. I like the fact they bring in the Constitution class Enterprise with Captain Christopher Pike. Um, just to know, I am really looking forward to watching Strange New Strange New Worlds because that is still set before the original series, and I would actually like to see Captain Christopher Pike a lot more because Christopher Pike is from the original episode, the original pilot, the Cage, until they scrapped that episode and then just remade it with James T. Kirk. I wish I would have kept Commander Pike, Captain Christopher Pike. I like the fact they have updated the Enterprise as well for modern for the modern screen, so it's not like the model from the 1960s. They've actually made it a lot better. I absolutely do love that. And I love how they bring back Spock as well. I like how the fact it's not focused on a captain anymore in Discovery. It's like focused. Specifically, it's focused on Commander Burnham, her story through Discovery's timeline. So when she served on the Oh, fuck, the ship. I forgot the original ship. Not the Discovery. Shangsha USS. S yeah, I can't think of the first name at the moment. I've, it's been a while since I watched season one. Because I'm mainly watching... I'm in the middle of watching T, re watching TNG at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to sitting down re-watching Discovery again. Just before... I always do this, though. I normally re-watch Discovery... 
when it comes up to a new season. So when season four is about to join on to Netflix, I most probably been been watch um season one, two, and three of Discovery. It is a great series. I like the way they updated the future, like for Discovery, with the nacelles not actually attached. Um, I like the way they actually called it the Discovery A. Um, so it's like a new ship. I like the fact they're bringing Voyager in this, where they call it USS Voyager, and it's the J version of Voyager. So that is the ninth generation of the ship. So Voyager is still famous, even though it's a ship that got lost in the Delta Quadrant. Very much enjoyable. I do like that. So my fourth favourite Star Trek show, I have to say, it's Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I absolutely do love this season. Now, not many people do like Deep Space Nine. Most people think it's like weak. They think it's bad. I absolutely kind of enjoy see, uh, Deep Space Nine. Admittedly, season one and two and a little bit of three are a bit slow. But as soon as they introduce the Defiant in season three, that's when Deep Space Nine kicks off. Because it's not really set on the space station. They can go off off the space station in some episodes, go into the Defiant and go off into the Gamma Quadrant. Go and deal with the Gemma Dar. And I love it from seasons four, five, six and seven because I absolutely love it. I love the bit with season four and five. With the Klingon War, so the Klingons go back to their own old ways. They go back and they're going to conquer Cardassia Prime because I think the Cardassians have been took over by shapeshifters. So that's a really great concept. And then when you get into season five, I love the episode where they go back in time to Captain Kirk's time with the Tribbles. I think that's done absolutely brilliantly. I love the fact you end up going into the Dominion War at the end of season five when Cisco mines the entrance to the wormhole. So the Dominion and the Jemadar and the Cardassians. Basically go and take over Deep Space Nine. And they call it back Terra Knorr. I absolutely do like that. That's a good plot. So I do like the way the Cardassians. Like with Gold Chakotay he comes. I've been waiting this moment for over five years. I absolutely love that line. Gold Chakotay is a great Star Trek villain for me. And I will have to do the ranking of the Star Trek villains. I really really do enjoy Deep Space Nine's run. I love the way season at the end of season 5 you've got 6 and 7. Literally focus on the Dominion War. I absolutely do like the Dominion War. It has got some great battles. Like I love the battle when they go back to retake Deep Space Nine. With the Federation on their own before the Klingons can join in. And then you've got the Cardassians with the Jemadar ships. And it just absolutely loves that battle. And I love the last battle as well. When they go to Cardassia Prime to try and end the war. And then Cisco dies and becomes a prophet in, in the Celestial like portal where Gold Chakot goes and enjoys the Par Wraiths. I do quite enjoy that. Deep Space Nine is a great series. I would high I wouldn't actually recommend it for season one and two, but after when you get into season three, I would highly recommend it a lot. Specifically season two, if you missed the Marquee episode, that's actually worth watching for season two. Where season three I would actually recommend the search parts one and two. I would actually recommend the whole lot of season three. Season four, I would actually recommend. I love season four. Five, six, and seven, absolutely amazing. I do love that. So coming into my third favourite Star Trek show, and I have to say this, it is Star Trek Picard. I love Star Trek Picard. Um, I like the fact they brought bring back Picard, uh, Patrick Stewart as Picard. I think Patrick Stewart still sits into the role of Picard. I like the way he has his com badge. Now, unfortunately, it's not this type of com badge which he has. It's more like his Star Trek Generations up to Nemesis com badge. I like the references to Data in Season 1, that Data's still alive. I don't like the way they did it, though, to have him, like, unplugging the chips out of the computer so Data, Data can fully die. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Nemesis, Data, Commander Data does die. I like the way they bring in 7 and 9 from Voyager. So, I love the bit when you see the Borg ship crash land on the planet where the... With the android, the android planet. I like the bit where you have Seven just there kicking over a dead Romulan body. And then she goes, heads up. And I love the way they brought in Voyager's, like the music from Voyager there. Do, 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 do. I love that bit when they literally bring Seven in. I like the way they bring in each chip as well. Even though they kill off each chip. I think that was a bit of a harsh thing to do. But I do like each. I do like the way they brought back E-Chip. I like the way they brought back Hugh in it as well. Hugh was a Borg drone that the Federation... Well, the crew of the USS Enterprise NCC-1701D, the Galaxy class, finds a low Borg and they actually help him. And then Data's brother Law comes into it and then Law, somehow Hugh comes back at this point until he's killed off by the Romulans. 
I do like the way they actually have the Rom like the Romulans kidnap a Borg, like get hold of a Borg ship and name it the Ark, um, the artifact. And I like the way you have Data's like two daughters of Data. You got Darsh and Varsh. Darsh and Varsh. And I love the return of Commander William T. Riker and Deanna Troy, aka even though they do have a daughter, the son acts passed away. Um, I like the way they have Riker with, with Troy with a daughter. And she's very wild, like Commander Riker is. I like the way with Riker as well. I love the bit with the next generation thing where Picard walks in. He goes, hello, Will. And he goes, <laughs> do like that. I do like B Patrick Stewart and Picard with Commander Riker. I love the bit with Picard standing up to the Roman fleet and then with Commander Riker saying, what, you didn't think I would let you go it alone, did you? <laughs> I love... Jonathan Franks is amazing as Commander William T. Riker in Star Trek Picard, as well as T and G. And it is just a great... 10 episodes. I'm really looking forward to season 2 when they bring back Q. I'd like to know what he means by the trial never ended, Captain. I really would like to know what they mean by that. Are they going to revisit the trial from the next generation? Never mind. we find out soon, hopefully. Hopefully it's not too long away. So that, anyway, that's my third favourite Trek show. So my second favourite Trek show. Now this one has moved up a lot. I, have to, I do have to say, it has moved up a high lot. It used to be my third favourite Trek, even back when I was at school with my best mate, Jamie Arrowsmith. And because Jamie's not only a fan of Star Trek and Doctor Who like me, he's a fan of other stuff like me as well, which is why we're best friends. But his favourite Star Trek show is Voyager. And I think he will be happy to hear Voyager has actually moved into my second favourite TV show. I do like Voyager. I like the way it's set in the Delta Quadrant, like how it got pulled in from the Caretaker into the Delta Quadrant. I like the fact you meet new alien species like the Erosion, species 8472. You have more Borg episodes because the Borg are actually based in the Delta Quadrant where in the Alpha Quadrant and Beta Quadrant they use the portal. I like the way they bring another Federation Starship later on in season 5 and 6 with the Equinox and Janeway has to go and capture the Equinox. I absolutely do love those episodes. I love Dark, Dark, um, Dark Matter, Dark Frontier. With the Borg, when they introduced, we reintroduced the Borg Queen who died in First Contact. I absolutely do like the way with the Kazon. I love that. I absolutely do love the Kazon from season one, two, and three of Voyager. I love the way with the Kazons when they take over Voyager. I absolutely do like the way with that because I think that was actually, I wasn't really expecting that when I first saw it. I would have thought Janeway would have got the ship away, but no, the Kazons took over Voyager and then it's down to Tom Paris. With the Talaxians to come and take over to come and battle Voyager with the help of the Doctor and Mr. Suta. Commander Dakota is a good character. I like the way they bring in seven and nine as well. Season one for me is the weakest season of Voyager, but it sets up a lot with it being set like pulled away from the Alpha Quadrant after being set like after it departed Deep Space Nine. I love the way they bring in Deep Space Nine as a cameo, which I have to say that as well with Deep Space Nine. I like the way in the first episode they bring in the Enterprise from the next generation with Captain Picard and Cisco talking um, with, with that reference from of the Battle of War 359. With Voyager, I absolutely love, love it where you see Harry with Tom Paris, Harry Kim talking to Quark and he's trying to con them. I absolutely do like that. It's a great scene. I absolutely love the bit when you see Voyager, Doc from Depart Deep Space Nine going after the Marquis ship. I like the few references when you get into later on where they make recontact with the Starfleet Command where they find out that the Dominion have broke through the Federation territory. Some people unkilled all the Marquis. It's a really great season. It's like it's a really great series, Voyager is. Uh, it did used to be my third favourite before Star Trek. But to be honest with you, back in school, it was really more T and um, not so my first one, just nearly did. If you heard it, yes, it is the next generation, my favourite. It did used to be TNG, DS9 and then Voyager, but Voyager and Picard have moved up. Voyager's moved up into second place. Picard, even though it came out last year, it has moved into my third favourite because I absolutely do like Picard. I love re-watching it as well. I like the little ship they have in Picard as well. And I have to say, my all-time favourite ep um, episode of Voyager is the last one, Endgame. Very confusing how it starts off for the future and then you've got the past Janeway coming back in time. To get Voyager back to the Alpha, back to the Alpha Quadrant before Seven and Nine died, dies and stuff. It's a great season to be honest with you. It's series finale. I really think it would have worked better as a film, like they originally planned. But 
Yeah, I like the way they brought in the Borg as well to use the Borg transport hub. And giving Voyager the art transphasic, the armor plating and the transphasic torpedoes. <gasps> I absolutely love that bit as well. That's how Voyager got home. I do love that. So, just a bit more about Voyager. I like the way they're bringing Q in as well. Because I think after Deep Space Nine, Q didn't really work well in Deep Space Nine. But in Voyager... I absolutely love the three episodes of his. I love the way in Q2 where he literally turns up to tell his son off because if the continuous told you once, they've told you thousands of times, you don't provoke the Borg. I absolutely love the way he tells his son off. You don't provoke the Borg. <laughs> I absolutely love the way he does that. I like the bit in season three where he literally goes to try and get to mates with Catherine Janeway, but he ends up meeting with another Q, the female Q and impregnates her. It's a great, it's, that's a good story. So, Death Wish, I really don't like John Leeson as Q in that one. I think he's really, really overdone as Q, especially when you've got the Q trying to, who wants to kill himself. Very much, it's still pretty much okay for what those episodes are, but I absolutely love Q2, where he lit with his son and he's trying to teach his son manners to so turn him human. I love the way he tells his son off. He goes, if the Q2 continue have told you once, they've told you for dozens of times, you don't provoke the Borg. <laughs> I absolutely love the way he tells his son off. So, coming into my all-time favourite Star Trek show, and as you can tell from the uniform, it is The Next Generation. I love The Next Generation. Patrick Stewart is amazing as John Luke Picard. It's a shame... I fear I do think Starship Picard most probably moving to second place after a few more seasons. I can't tell you that. After season one, and it's moved into my third favourite Trek. I think it will move up a lot more. So anyway, about Star Trek The Next Generation, I love the next TNG. It's great. It's fantastic. I love the way they introduced Q in the first episode in Cat of Farpoint. Season 1 and 2 are like the, considered to be the worst seasons of TNG, but I still think you got some good episodes in Season 1 and 2. Season 3 up to 7 is when it gets really, really great. I love Picard as he disciplines Wesley Crusher in the episode with Wesley, where Wesley is there like being put on trial and he admits to them trying to do something that killed a cadet to die. I love the way Picard gives him like, that speech i can't remember how it actually goes but it goes you don't if you can't be willing to tell the truth stand up and tell the truth you don't deserve to wear that uniform do i make myself perfectly clear ensign <laughs> i love the bit as well with picard when he gets kidnapped by the borg I, that was a really great cliffhanger and one of the best episodes uh the of um the best of both worlds parts one and two i like the way the, he gets kidnapped and assimilated into luke as a borg i absolutely do like that episode i like the chain of command as well where he's being tortured by the Cardassians, and then he's like trying to break him down to admit defeat and he still stands there even though there are like five lights he literally goes there are four lights i absolutely do love that episode i love the bit where he finds out he's got a son but it's not actually his son it's just damon bach who basically wants revenge on book on Picard, considering Picard killed his son in the Battle of Maxia, which is before Picard took command of the Enterprise D, which is the Galaxy Class Starship. I really quite enjoy TNJ. I like Commander Riker. Brent Spiner is my favourite character after Captain John Picard. I do like Brent Spiner. He's my second favourite character. Well, he's my second favourite actor because he plays Lieutenant Commander Data. And I absolutely do like Brent Spanner's data. LeVar Burton is brilliantly as Commander Forge. As the, I like the way in Season 5 they're bringing Ro Laren. I like the way they're trying to... Like, the cards there going, I will not have her aboard this ship. And then the Atmos is going, Tough, you've got her. End of discussion. I absolutely do like TNG. I like the way they're bringing the Marquis after because halfway through Season 6 and 7 of The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine was going on because... Even though Next Generation is set from 2364 to 2370. Uh, by the time you get to Deep Space Nine, which is set in 2369 to, 23, to 20, 2375, I think it's set. Yeah, mind about there. Because Voyager's set in 23... 
23... Yeah, that's it. Voyager set in 2371. And it came back in 2379. Round about the time Picard goes and deals with Sinjan. Round about the same time of year. We're just after... She comes back before Picard has to go and deal with Shinzon in Nemesis, which will be another ranking video. So this is how I rank every single Star Trek TV show. It, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do like, subscribe and share. And hopefully I will get more subscribers from my Star Trek fans as well. Although I will be, there will be a Doctor Who video coming out later on today. So there will be two videos, one Star Trek, one Doctor Who. So hopefully this one does become popular because there will be more Star Trek videos on the way. Thank you for watching and please prepare to dock out of Deep Space Nine.